This video is about our 17 ego defense mechanisms or ways in which we protect ourselves. We all have something called instinctive drives which is food, clothing, shelter, ego which is a provisioning mechanism and our super ego which is our sense of morality and spirituality. So when our instinctive drive say something like I want a milkshake with, with extra toppings and strawberries, it's the role of the ego to say no, we are at war, rushing the provision, drink water for now. It plays the role of the mediator. Sometimes though, the instinctive drives are so big that the repeated request from the instinctive drive forces the ego to succumb and we come up with excuses called ego defense mechanisms. Here are the 17 ego defense mechanisms or ways in which we justify our own actions. Number 17 is called denial of reality. It is protecting the self from an unpleasant reality by the refusal to perceive or face it. An example of this could be an employee disregards the health risks of smoking by believing that the scientific evidence is worthless. Number 16 is fantasy. The definition of this is that it is a gratifying of frustrated desires by imaginary achievements. We also call it as daydreaming. So low performing employee fantasizes being recognized as the employee of the month without actually doing anything for it or winning the lottery. Number 15 is repression. It is preventing painful or dangerous thoughts from entering into a consciousness. So you might have a frustrated boss who wants to murder his employee because of his underperformance, but then he doesn't actually act upon it because it's denied access to awareness. Number 14 is rationalization. It is using contrived explanations to conceal or disguise unworthy motives for one's behavior. An example of this is a racist department using ambiguous spiritual passages to justify discrimination towards certain sects of the staff. Number 13 is projection. It's nothing but attributing one's unacceptable motives or characteristics to others. An example of this is a insecure manager is convinced that the, all the other managers are plotting against him and wants him to get fired. Number 12 is reaction formation. It's preventing the awareness or expression of unacceptable desires by an exaggerated adoption of seemingly opposite behavior. Example, an orthodox employee wants to go to drinking parties with the marketing team, but instead he goes and does the opposite, which is closing down all the bars. Number 11 is displacement. This is discharging pent-up feelings, often of hostility to an object less injurious than causing the feelings. An example of this is a woman who is harassed by her boss, goes home and picks up an argument with her husband. Simply the direction of your anger or hostility to somebody lesser. Number 10 is emotional insulation. It is reducing ego involvement by protective withdrawal and passivity. An example of this is an employee who repeatedly falls sick, becomes emotionally unresponsive and apathetic. So if you're sick, you feel that you're not worthy of the job. Number nine is intellectualization. It is cutting off affective charge from hurtful situations or separating incompatible attitudes by logic tight compartments. An example of this is an employee who is given an unfair warning letter, forgoes his right to appeal and coldly insists that the manager's decision be followed even if it was unjust. Number eight is undoing. Atoning for or magically trying to dispel unacceptable desires or acts. A classic example of this is an employee misuses saying Staffarullah, forgive me on a habitual basis right after he says something bad about someone and he does this on a repeated basis. Number seven is regression. It is retreating to an earlier developmental level involving less mature behavior and responsibility. An example of this is a manager whose self-esteem is shattered in a public meeting rewards to childish show-off behavior and flaunts his expensive Porsche design phone. Says that I'm big. Number six is identification. It is increasing feelings of worth by affiliating oneself with a person or institution of illustrious standing. 
An example of this is a small-sized company CEO becomes excessively demanding of his employees in emulation of Apple Steve Jobs and says, we have to be as good as them. Number five is overcompensation. Discovering a perceived weakness by emphasizing a desirable characteristic or making up for frustration by over-gratification in another. An example of this is a dangerously overweight employee goes on binge eating when feeling neglected by his team or his manager. Number four is acting out. It is engaging in antisocial or aggressive behavior without regard to negative consequences as a way of dealing with stress. An unhappy, frustrated sales representative has several indiscriminate affairs without regard to the negative effects. Number three is splitting. This is viewing oneself as either all good or all bad or treating in an all or none behavior. This is quite common in terms of people who can't deal with all the different variations of characteristics and just treats them as all good or all bad, seeing most of them as all bad. Number two is sublimation. It is channeling frustrated sexual energy into substitutive activities. An example of this is excessive usage of sexual inendos in written or verbal communications at work, double talk, Number one is fixation. It is attaching oneself in an unreasonable or an exaggerated way to some person or arresting emotional development. An example of this is a senior manager with 15 years of experience depending on an executive director to guide him how to run his department. So there they are, our 17 ego defenses. While we don't talk about how to deal with them, I think the first step is to identify what we are going through and give them its right name. So these are the 17 ego defenses we come up to rationalize our emotional actions. Join us in this journey of self-awareness. If you like this video, please do subscribe and support us. Thank you.